going on guys? So listen, I am hanging out with Mean Gene Spalding. What's up, bro? How you doing, man? Good, to see Good you to see from you. Bobcat. Hey man, yeah. so real quick before we dive in, tell everyone who, like, who you are and where, you're, where you guys operate. Okay. So I'm um, Gene Spalding, I'm the owner of Bobcat Wildlife and Pest Management. We have three offices in Iowa, run in Des Moines, run in Waterloo, and run in Iowa City. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. I, I can tell you this, you don't know this, but I'll tell you is that Iowa, to me, is one of the most unserviced markets in the country. And uh, I now, now tell delete you, that. Oh, yeah. no, edit that out, damn it. <laughs> no, in all, in all honesty, no, man. No. So, so listen, Gene, so I've known you for, I guess, two and a half years yeah. now, maybe something like yeah. that. And I've been incredibly impressed by the way that you treat your staff, Thank the you. way that you treat your people, um, your commitment to training. Um, you know, I've had an opportunity to see you do trainings and honestly, it's at a world-class level and you should be Thank really you. proud of yourself, man. Thank you. So let me ask you this. So when you go build a model like you're building, and you start to think about it because you have a really good strategy. Like how did you start to think about putting this all together? So, well, it's my whole philosophy. It all starts and ends with service. Yeah. We are in a service business, Seth, and a lot of people forget that. It's easy to lose that when you get in the day to day. And, yeah. and when you have a heart to help people and if that person's the most important thing. So I train my guys that yeah. we are here to serve them and how we service them is providing an option. Everything we can do to stop what's happening or improve it, then we're gonna do that. We never high pressure sales. I mean, that, that's a high pressure sales is not happening. Yeah. I don't want somebody to regret what they did. I want them to realize that they want uh, they want to help us. And that's where they've been the success. I just kind of figured, how do I serve and how can I serve better? And it's an experience. Yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting. So I know some of your guys and in every single time I've ever spoken to any of them, they say the exact same thing. So however you're embedding that into the culture is something that I think a lot of owners and operators should really think about. I mean, I've had discussions with Blake, where Blake is like, literally says exactly what you said. He's like, we're here to serve the customer. We always do what's right. I live in a small town. Yeah. We have to do what's right. Yes. That's our reputation. That's who we are as a business. And so that's pretty amazing, man. So I started it, it, it comes down to ethics. Yep. I have to be able to sleep at night. I have to live in my head. I have to look myself in the mirror and say, did you do everything you could today? Yeah. And so that's where it comes. And I, 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 I believe in training my guys. I'd love to give them the knowledge because I'm, I'm asking you to go to represent me. Yep. And why would I not give you all the tools? Because I, I, what, you're, I'm afraid you're gonna go start your own thing. If you go start your own thing, then I look at it as, I gave you enough confidence that you're gonna go do yours and the level of service has just risen. So as I hear it, there's a statement that's been made by, uh, by Richard Branson, and I'm sure you've probably read it. Richard Branson says, is that you know? Don't be afraid of your, essentially. Don't don't be afraid of your people leaving you, yeah. but train them so they never want to leave, That's right? It. And I and we believe that philosophy in my company, and I, mm -hmm. and, I, and I I see that in your people. I hear it through your people, and it's it's pretty amazing, man. I will say, 17 years of doing this. 17 had, years? Yes. Wow. Started in 07. Wow, at 10 years old, huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I've done I've done this from Florida to Idaho to back to the Midwest. That's cool. So I've seen a lot of things. I have never had somebody leave me to start their own business. Yeah. So which is your so out of the states, which is your favorite place to work? Oh, uh, for what reason? For Idaho is by far for the environment. I'm from there. I oh, love okay, the cool. mountains. Just the opportunities for an outdoor lifestyle. Florida was great because of all the well the sun, but I hate snakes. <laughs> so yeah, I don't deal well with shit that tries to eat me. Um, the Midwest, when Florida we, boy, yeah. we like we like shit that tries to eat yeah, us. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so um, I lived in Orlando for a while, but out of everything, the Midwest, we moved to the Midwest because it has everything. Yeah, it, it's it's got the heat, it's got the humidity, it has the insects, it has has everything. Yeah. So for so for, uh, and I like to hunt. I like to hunt deer. And I remember growing up as a little boy reading Field and Stream about giant Midwest whitetail. <laughs> and so now that I'm here, I own some ground and- Are, are they giant whitetails? Oh yeah. I, I'm not a hunter, so oh, yeah. I like to I like to eat the deer, but yeah. I don't like to hunt the deer. So. Yeah, I like to do it all. I like <laughs> it. Yeah, it's about as fresh as you can get it from 100 yards from my field to my table, so. Oh. Yeah, I'm pretty lucky. That's cool. So, well, well listen, man, so you're building this really cool thing and I think a lot of operators can learn a lot from you huh. because, um, you know, a lot of people build businesses and they're like, let's just go try to make as much money as we can. And, but they forget about the authenticity. And I think you guys have nailed that, yeah. man. You guys should be really proud of yourselves. Yeah, thank you, know? you. I try. Yeah, so, so, uh, so Gene, 
we're sitting here at Nicoa. Yeah. We're sitting here at a booth doing this basically live with tons of people. Right. So uh, what kind of questions can I answer for you, man? Okay, yeah. So I've actually got a couple. Uh, so we But have... you like came prepared? Oh yeah. Dude, I don't do that shit. Well, yes. Yeah, so <laughs> I have to. Seth, you get you can't get this big without having lists. So one day you'll grow up. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. <laughs> A couple things. You came to Iowa and we listened to you. You did yep. your manager meeting and yep. and you said one thing in there that I really wanted to come pick up. You mentioned a a membership program for for some of the, the businesses you work. Uh, yep. So I work with a large construction company sure. where we do a lot of data centers. Yep. They have me um, come in and do all the road work. Yep. So I, I I would like to build a membership program for those employees. Yep. How do I go about doing that? How do I start that? How do I initiate it? And yeah. how does it, so, is it mutually beneficial? Yeah, so when you say when you say membership, you're referring to selling the employees services for their yeah, homes? Yeah, I wanna offer them services and I wanna be able to give them a discount because they're an employee. How do I go find other people to hop on and yeah. make it a package so it's not just, hey, come and do my pest control or my wildlife work, but I wanna have other yep. people so they can, oh, and whatever they- So it's kind of funny because I'm gonna give a session on that later today, which okay. is pretty cool, but. But so here's the thing. So one of the things we have to remember when we build any company, and I think this is why it's so interesting, is that we have to think about where the eyes are and where mm -hmm. our buyers are. And so I think you're really smart here because if you're doing, if you're working within a data center, is that you're dealing with the people who have the money. Yes. These are high paid individuals. Yes. These are your ideal customer profile. Yes. And the reality is, is that these guys are buying from you. Yeah. And so the process is really simple. So the process that we've always used across the nation and even for my own companies, it was very simple, is that whoever is the owner of these data centers, right, whoever owns this, they have an HR department, yes. okay? And so when you go to meet with the HR department, okay. is the HR department has may have an employee discount program or they might not. If they have one, you plug in, okay. and then the only thing you have to figure out is who controls the information. Okay. So whether they're sending a message out, whether you can, what you're allowed to do. Okay. okay. The bigger win though is that they may not have that program. Right. And so the biggest win is if they don't have the program, now you can become an incredibly trusted partner. Yes. Because you can actually bring it to the table and they can actually implement that in for all kinds of stuff. That's the position I'm in. They don't have one. Right. And I want to be, I want to offer that for right. them. So, so the simplest stuff, the simplest stuff you have to do, Gene, is that you have to make it stupid simple for them. Okay. And so there's no asking. You tell them how you're going to do it. Right. And so you meet with the HR department. Hey, HR department. Hey, um, we want to develop an employee discount program. You know, obviously it's beneficial for us because of the services we provide. But what I would also think is great is your employees probably want this. It'll increase the employee retention if you do things like this, okay. especially if you make it an initiative. And by the way, we're going to do the work for you. Okay. And so all you have to do is get us a list of all the people that you guys think are vendors, local gyms, whatever, and we'll actually put it together. We'll build the messaging and all we need from you, okay? Ready guys? All we need from you is the list of your employees so we can message them for you so you don't have to do any work. <laughs> well, that's pretty stinking simple. Right? That's it. Okay. And then you have to execute, right? So yeah. whatever, and, and now again, there's you might have to put an agreement in place. There might be some mm -hmm. different disclosures, but that's how we did it. Okay. Um, our companies would sell thousands and thousands of customers uh, with these kind of programs, okay. which you've heard us talk about. Yeah, I heard you talk yep. about it, and that really kicked my mind because I'm, I'm trying to grow the business. Yeah. I firmly believe that people in my area yeah. deserve the service I give them because it's top notch. Yeah. So which leads me to the next thing is one thing I have struggled is I've always paid well, and I, how do you motivate your guy when he's done everything and it's Friday at noon or two, how do you get him to say, yeah, I'll take Mrs. Smith's call. How do I help that? How do I, so the next question is, is how do I build a employee re, uh, benefit program to strive, to get them to strive? How, what does that look like? So, you've been there, you've done yeah, that. Yeah, so, so let's, let's talk about this in a different context. Okay. So, I think, I think as a business owner, and how old are you now? I forget. I'm 50. Okay, so you're 50, I'm 43. So we grew up in a generation where things were different. Yes. So we grew up in a generation where your company provides everything. Yes. And we, and, and our generation strive to be part of the company, yeah. right? Yeah. So I think the most important part is, is that we have to understand the people that work with us before we ever consider any of this other stuff. And so if I go and build a company, is that what I want to focus on is like, what's most important to my person not my people, yeah, my person, person. right? Okay. Yeah. And the reason I say that is because if I know that somebody has very specific goals and I can help them get to their very specific goals, their goals might not be financial, okay. right? And so we as, as owners, we think everyone's financially motivated, but right. most people actually aren't. Right. And so if I've got a technician to your example who wants to take a half day on Friday, okay? Right. And I'm like, I want you to work harder. 
well, he might not want to work harder, dude. Right. So why don't we move into a four-day work week as it is incentive? Okay. Right? Right. Makes sense? Oh, yeah. That's so great. now the guy's incentivized. Okay. Now we're not pushing against something he wants. And now what do you actually get? You get somebody, instead of working an eight-hour workday, they might work a 12-hour workday because yeah. they are so thankful yeah. to get a Friday off. Well, Does that I make think, sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I started Pest Daily last year. I hopped in and you had one segment of finding your one, five, and a seven year. Yep and review and we started doing that. How's it going? Uh, it's going great. So this last year we had 32% growth company-wide. Dude, uh, yeah. congratulations. <laughs> I'm blessed beyond all measure. Yeah. So it's not me, it's my team. Yeah, of course. Um, I, my fortunately that I don't, I'm not in the field very much. Yeah, um, especially not during hunting season. Oh shoot, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> so one of the things I set down and I, I just empowered my guys, I gave them knowledge. Like I showed you the list for this year, yeah. my list is, Go through pests daily and find questions and create in-house tests. Dude, I'm not going to lie. I almost teared up when you showed me that list earlier, yeah. by the way. That was pretty yeah, cool. So I hit it, and there's a gold mine. There's a lot in there. It's a lot of on the manager side, but that little thing of finding those genes. So I started doing that last year, and I started plugging my people in and giving them the opportunities to learn with what interested them. Yeah. And it's nothing that I, I well, I worked my butt off. We had some cool opportunities, but my guys, all of them outperformed way above what I could expect. 32% growth in this day and age at our level is gigantic numbers. Well, dude, you know what? The thing, the thing that I always respected about you is like, you know, and as really like our product is, you were, you walked up, you looked at it, and you went, holy shit, bought it for everybody. Yeah, everybody. Day one. Day one, Day one. no and, questions. Um, it's like, give me everybody. Everybody's on it. And it's, it's hilarious. Like, it was hilarious to me because, like, I thought it was so smart, right? Like, not because of our product. Like, dude, lots of people buy yeah. our product. But, like, the, your approach was, like, we're getting these guys up to running. We're going to get them killing it. Yeah. This has got what we need. It was pretty cool, man. I, I was I always think about y'all's company, you know? I appreciate it. Yeah. And, um, and I always think about y'all. And I have, I've tried really hard. I We are successful because I tell my guys, I exhausted every failure. So I, I, I sucked <laughs> up all those rocks. You just have smooth sailing. So um, I empower my guys. I give them the knowledge. I train. And then I want them to go fail. Yeah. Because failure in my company is not a bad thing. It's not a four-letter word. Yeah. All of the best things has come because I have failed. Yeah. I want my guys to fail. It's an opportunity to learn and improve. It's That's really interesting. So you don't know about this about our company. So our company, um, in our, our business, like failure is fine. Yeah. Like is, uh, and I don't care about mistakes. Like I care about like the future and where we're mm -hmm. going and everyone's inspired. And um, it's interesting to hear you say that because a lot of times in our industry, especially people in, of our generation, right. is that it's typically not acceptable, man. It's yeah. typically not acceptable. Yeah, you know? not acceptable to fail. Failure yeah. is bad and you're, you're a total piece of crap if you have failed. Yeah, isn't it so, interesting? It, yeah. So what else, man, what else can I answer for um, you? The last thing is one thing that's really important to me, and this kind of speaks to the industry. When I, uh, Jesse Frazier and I were talking about yeah. this a little earlier, is that when we were coming up, nobody wanted to share information. We didn't want to share how we did things because we were afraid they were going to steal it. That's just the way we came up. Yeah. And, and that philosophy, I've always kind of been against this because I fell into this business. I mean, yeah. a squirrel died in a plumbing stack. And a buddy needed help because he knew I knew how to get in an attic. Yeah. And I had this business. I didn't know this industry was around. I watched that guy cut the plumbing stack open, take that squirrel out, put a boot in it. We go downstairs. That old lady wrote a $300 check. I remember this. <laughs> she wrote a $300 check, handed it to him, tears in her eyes, gave him a huge hug, gave me a huge hug and said, thank you. We got in the truck and I go, dude, she paid you and she was happy to do it. This is a thing. And he's like, you can't keep up. Yeah. He's like, you just can't. So I was like, uh, I'm, no the wild guy. <laughs> I'm in. So I didn't know very much. And I asked questions and I was relentless with asking questions. Yeah. I tell my guys, this is it. It's not, it's okay to say, I don't know. The key thing component is I don't know, but if you really want the answer, I'll go find out and I'll tell you, yeah. I'll share this. I go to this point. I had a client very early on. I show up to her house, checking all the things that I can do for her, like normal, like we all do. This is what I can do. And then she asked me a question. I don't even remember what the question was, but it was so out of the water. I mean, it stopped me. And I was like, uh, I don't know that, but I'll go find out. And she goes, no, I ask you that question because I know you wouldn't know that because you don't have the degree I have. Wow. She was like, I've asked five other companies that, that same question. Yeah. Every single, the other guys all made up an answer. You're the first tech that said, I didn't know and I'll find out. 
She was like, you get my house, you get my rental houses, and you get my businesses. Dude. Because that came out to be, is now almost a six-figure account. Isn't that amazing? Just because I was honest enough to say, I don't know. So that's my takeaway. Train your people to say, I don't know, but then give them the tools to go find out. Yeah. You'll get a better technician, your company will be better, profitability will go up, and at the end of the day, everybody's happier. Dude, what a powerful statement to make, man. Well, I appreciate you coming out and doing this with me, man. Yeah, this like, is dude, blast. Do you, you like this? You need anything, anytime. Yeah, man. You know, I appreciate you saying that because, you know, I do, the, you've seen my, some of my trainings. I love I, them, yeah. I, I don't think I do very good. Like the one you saw. Oh, dude. You saw my, you saw my respirator training at, at I thought so, I bombed it. I was like, so, man, that's the worst thing I ever did. So, I, so I'll tell you this. You took the most unsexy thing called respirator training and I like watched you spend 25 minutes cleaning a respirator and I was like, all I, could, all I could think about is how many times back in the day I would take my respirator out, like take it out, and I'd be like, nah, I'm good. And I just put that dirty ass thing back oh, on because yeah. I didn't want to do it. And I was like, man, I probably had like tons and tons of oh, yeah. diseases. Oh, I yeah. Didn't know, so right? nasty. Like, yeah, it was gross. Well, I had a guy call me after that. And he kind of was like, he's a buddy, but he was he was dropping some F bombs on me. And he was like, because of you, I took my stinking respirator training. And he was like, and that thing grossed me out. I threw it away and bought a new one. Yeah. And I'm like, well, that's because you don't ever clean it. So <laughs> you probably, when you did that training, you probably sold like a thousand additional respirators. So that happened to everybody in that room, probably. Yeah. So, yeah. well, man, well, I appreciate you hanging out. Appreciate with us, it. Man. anything Thanks. you let Thanks. me know. Yeah, great, thanks, man. Hope you all enjoyed this, guys. Appreciate it.